Welcome back to my channel for a short tutorial on how to use the pixel shift multi shot feature on the brand new Nikon C6 Mark III. Let's kick this off. So what is pixel shift multi shot? Well, First of all, it's implemented in most modern professional cameras. You find it, for instance, in the Leica SL2, not yet in the Leica SL3. You find it in Sony Alpha cameras. You find it in Fuji cameras with APS-C sensor, but also in the medium format GFX lineup. You find it in Nikon cameras. You find it in Canon cameras. It's implemented in a lot of cameras and it's all based on the same principle, namely in-body image stabilization. And in order to stabilize the camera for tiny little shakes and vibrations, the sensor with in-body image stabilization cameras is floating freely in a magnetic field and can then compensate for these tiny shakes and vibrations and keep the sensor stable. And in this way, you get longer exposures handheld. And uh, that feature is now also used in many cameras for pixel shift multi-shot. And what it does is it shifts the sensor by half a pixel or a pixel in different directions and in this way combines then a series of frames into one single frame with enhanced resolution. In a nutshell, that's what Pixel Shift Multi-Shot is all about. And since the Nikon C6 Mark III has Pixel Shift Multi-Shot now implemented based on in-body image stabilization, I think it's time to provide a short tutorial how to use that feature. So if we go into the menu, we need to go to the camera section. It's just here. And in the camera section, you have to scroll down a long way or you're smart and remember that pixel shift multi-shooting is actually at the end of the camera menu. So you just push the upper control here and then you're immediately there. And then the disappointment is big because pixel shift shooting is grayed out. And why is that so? And that's one of the tips I wanted to provide here. It's because I have activated here my self timer because last night I was in the mountains and doing a shooting with that camera. And here we are at a two second self timer. And if the self timer is activated, pixel shift multi-shooting is grayed out. So you cannot activate it. So we need to do something about it. We go here to the drive mode button and then we deactivate it by going back into single frame shooting. Simple like that. And now if I go back into the menu, it's no longer grayed out, so I can use it. So let's go into that sub menu here and then I can activate it and I have a choice to say I want to do just one pixel shift multi shot or I want to do it several times and then you go on series. I'm here only going on a single photo and then you can choose between the number of shots and there is 4, 8, 16 and 32. And uh, I recommend always to go for 32. Why not using the full potential and spectrum if you have your camera on a tripod anyway and want to do a pixel shift shooting. So go for 32. And then here's the reason why the self timer is not needed because there is an initial delay. And that's here currently for two seconds, which is I think a good choice. If you want to let the camera calm down further, go for five or 10 seconds, but I use it typically for two seconds. And that's the way to go here. And then you can choose how long will the time pass by between the next shot in a sequence of images. And I have this very often at zero seconds, so it just keeps shooting. But you can, of course, also go to one second, for instance. And in this way, make sure that if you use mechanical shutter, the camera is very calm and silent before it takes the next shot, which is in particular important if you go for longer exposures. Then you might even go for two seconds or five seconds. And then the sequence will take, of course, much longer. And that means even more that if you have some moving subjects in the scene, the composition of these frames into one single frame might have some artifacts. So that's what you have in the menu here. And then if you have chosen it in that way, you can go back into the shooting mode and then the instructions here say, press and release the shutter release button and then the sequence kicks off. Let's do this for a second here. We are here at, let's go here down to, what do we have? Let's say an F5.6 and ISO is on auto. Let's go to, to make this quicker, let's go into manual mode and let's go down to a faster shutter speed. Let's go down here to one over 200 seconds. And then if I press and release the shutter button, we'll have an initial delay of two seconds. That's what I adjusted. And then the sequence will kick off. It will take 32 frames. These 32 frames I will show in a moment 
via Nikon software how to combine them and merge them into one single frame with super resolution. And then we also look into sample images, of course, how this looks like in real life. So let's take the sequence of shots. Initial delay, two seconds. You see this camera firing here and the green LED lighting. That's how it works. Let's do this once more. Sounds actually very nice. Let's do this once more. Initial delay. Oh, ha! see here. I was choosing in the menu only one single shot. So that's why I'm not back in the normal shooting mode here and can take shots. So let's go back here. If I would have chosen here on series, it would have remained in that mode. Let's quickly try this out. Let's go back. Two seconds initial delay. 32 frames. Now if I repeat that, now it will stay in the pixel shift multi shot mode. Have a look. Initial delay. And that's because I've chosen here in the menu, if we go back here, I've chosen here that this is on series and not on single photo. If you do it on single photo, it works just once and then you're back in the normal drive mode. That's how it works. Let me now provide instructions how to compile these 32 frames into one single frame with super resolution. And then let's also look into a couple of sample images. I'm now here in NX Studio, which is the software you can download from the Nikon website to actually combine 32 frames from a pixel shift multi shot into one single frame with 96 plus megapixel of resolution. And it's very straightforward how to do that. Let me show you. So here are a lot of images which come from different series of the multi shot I showed before. And uh, I can now select just one of these frames here, one. And uh, you see below these frames, if they belong to a pixel shift multi shot sequence, there is actually a small icon, looks like two stacked images, and it's the word pixel attached to it. And if I select that frame, I can go to pixel shift merge, and then it detects that this frame here belongs to a series of 32 shots, which I can now combine into one single frame with close to 100 megapixel resolution. So Nikon says 96 megapixel Lightroom, when I look into these images, is at about 97 megapixel. Let's call it close to 100 megapixel, or let's call it just a super resolution, coming from a sensor with natively only 24 megapixel. I want to generate one image here. I will also allow for chromatic aberration correction. I want to store the image on the desktop and I also want to give it a name. And then I can kick this off by pushing the start button here. And then the software does everything automatically for me. It just merges and combines these 32 frames into one single high resolution frame. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. It's actually a much smarter solution than what we have, for instance, for the Fuji GFX 100 Mark II, where you have to dedicatedly select the frames and then load them into the software and then very often you get some error messages and so on. Here it works very reliable, like a charm. I like a lot that software solution that Nikon offers here. Let's do another one. Here's another one. Let's pick this frame here from another multi-shot sequence. Let's go to pixel shift merge. It offers me different series. So here is one uh, which is the correct one. The other one where from the other scene I was taking photos of. Let's give it now a different name. Let's call this Schweetz underscore MP and number two. Then let's press OK. Let's go to start. And then the image is generated for me. Very straightforward, very good solution, Nikon, very well done. Let's now look into these two scenes, which we just processed uh, with the NX Studio from Nikon. And I have always on the left hand side, the native resolution shot with 24.4 megapixel. And on the right hand side, I have the pixel shift multi shot image with here indicated by Lightroom 97.5 megapixel, although Nikon in the specifications talks about 96 megapixel. And the images look kind of exactly the same. There is a nuance of difference in the atmosphere. I don't know if it is white balance or brightness between the two images, but it doesn't look to me like exactly the same. And there is a statement in the Nikon specification saying that the pixel shift multi-shot 
delivers an even more noise-free, clean image. Maybe that's it. I don't know exactly. I don't think it's as elevated in the second scene I'm going to show, but here, if you look at it, you clearly see that these images are not exactly the same. Now, in terms of resolution, of course, that makes a big difference, right? I mentioned in my first video on the Nikon C6 Mark III that 24.5 megapixel resolution is plenty of space, but clearly there is a huge difference to almost 100 megapixels. So let's crop in here by 100%. Let's have a look. Both images are pinpoint sharp. Look also at the grass here in the foreground. Looks quite nice. Look at the house in the background and the barn here in the foreground. Very nice, but of course you get plenty more details and you can get much closer in terms of cropping in on the right hand side with the pixel shift multi shot. That's obvious. Let's go to the mountains here. Look at that. Very nice. So I think multi shot is a really good option if you have no moving subjects in the scene. If it is still image landscape or architectural photography, then you get four times the resolution with the same camera, although the native resolution of that particular sensor is only 24.4 megapixel. Looks really good. Let's look here at the mountain. In the multi-shot, you see a better representation of the station on top of the mountain here. And uh, that is something you see only a little bit indicated here on the left-hand side with the native resolution. But all in, I think this is a really good result. And as I showed before, processing these frames into one single frame with almost 100 megapixel works like a charm in Nikon's NX Studio. It's really simple to do. Here's the second multi-shot image, again on the left-hand side, 24.4 megapixel native resolution. On the right-hand side, 97.5 megapixel as recognized in terms of resolution by Lightroom. And I think here the difference between the two images is not as elevated as in the image before, but it's there a little bit at least. So there must be something going on uh, either when you stack the images or in my workflow, whatever it is, that these images will look kind of the same, but not 100% exactly the same. And again, here you see the resolution, of course, makes a big difference. If you look into that, look how clean and how sharp these images are. Both are really good images. But of course, here, for instance, the letters on this building here towards the center, you can clearly read on the multi-shot image, but it's not possible to read them on the native resolution image on the left-hand side. And that makes a difference. Again, leverage it to your advantage. If you have still scenes, if you have architectural photography, it's a good option to go for the multi-shot if you have a tripod with you, because that's what you need. Let's crop in further here into the municipality of Schwyz. So here, for instance, you see the time clearly on the church clock tower you can hardly see it on the left-hand side with the native resolution. So there is a difference which you can do here. And it's a good fallback if you need resolution to go for the multi-shot. And uh, let's go in here for a moment. You see here on the left-hand side, clearly you see the cars parking in front of the barn and uh, the farmhouse here. Uh, but you see them much better, of course, here on the right-hand side in the multi-shot option and so on and so on. I don't want to overdo it. It's supposed to be a short tutorial. I hope you enjoyed these images. There is so much you can do with the Nikon C6 Mark III. And uh, let me quickly conclude my findings from that little exercise here. The pixel shift multi-shot mode really is a good option if you have still scenes in front of you like in architecture, landscape, product photography, because it lifts up your native 24.5 megapixel to 96 plus megapixel and in this way gets you a much higher resolution for much larger print dimensions and that's useful. If you have moving subjects in the scene, not a good idea to go for the pixel shift multi shot and of course you need to operate the camera on a tripod. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel. There's always more to come. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.